What's going on everybody? Mr. Thrasher here. Today we're checking out some cool things over at the Defen Bunker. I've been here before, but today I got a very special guest with me. That would be Rob on location. Also from here in Ottawa, how you doing? Yeah, good, good. It's nice to meet up and uh, we're gonna check out the Defen Bunker. They've used it for filming quite a few things over the years, so uh, it's a pretty cool hidden gem in Ottawa if you're ever in town. That's true, we're gonna try to match up a couple things. Not too much, we're gonna give a, the whole museum tour in there as well. Um, but a few good movies were filmed here. We had uh, Some of All Fears mm -hmm. with Ben Affleck and Morgan Freeman. Yep. Uh, most of that they filmed in Montreal, but they did uh, an intro scene here we're going to talk about on our way in. And maybe something else too. What was that other film uh, that was filmed here you were talking about? Well, I was mentioning the CBC show Son of a Critch. Right. Which is filmed in St. John's, Newfoundland, but mm -hmm. they did come here to film a couple uh, underground bunker scenes that they used in a flashback. So that was pretty cool. It was uh, season two. All right, keep your eyes open for that. We'll see if he can point point that out. Maybe you guys have seen that. Um, so Fat Man, there was a lot of scenes filmed in here as well. Like I said, we're gonna go in, pay admission, take a little tour down there, and see what we can find and match up. You can check out robonlocation.com. Yep. Is that it? And you can also check him out on Twitter or Instagram. Follow him on Instagram. He does amazing photography for filming locations all around all around the world, right? Yeah. Yeah, I get to travel quite a bit. I'm very fortunate. And uh, give me a follow uh, at Filming Locations is my handle on Instagram. Perfect, perfect. So before we even head in, Rob has not seen Fat Man. If anybody has not seen Fat Man, it is a Christmas film, but it actually begins with Christmas at the beginning of the movie, and then it goes on afterwards. Okay. So it's actually right in this spot where Walton Goggins' character, Skinny Man, he, he plays a hitman in the film. Uh, you might know Walton Goggins. Do you know Walton Goggins? Yeah, I've heard of him, yeah. yeah he was yeah. in uh, House of a Thousand Corpses yeah. as the sheriff who was afraid of the dog. <laughs> Said he got attacked by <laughs> nice. a cocker spaniel yeah. when he was a kid. So he comes out of here and he was he was at a shooting practice, okay, in the defense bunker. We're going to find that spot as well. He comes out here and he gets a call from the kid who got coal from Santa, basically, on Christmas. And he wants him to kill Santa Claus. So his car is parked right here, and he's getting in, he gets the call, and he lets him know he wants him to kill Santa Claus. You gotta check out that movie. If you've not seen Fat Man, check it out. Got Rob here doing his thing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I always loved the whole entryway. Yeah, it just looks like a here. small storage space or something, and you have no idea what you're in for once you enter this uh, secret bunker. We're going down. We're going down. This is cool. They, they, they moved it for the film. Like, you could see it in the shot, but not where it is right now. Okay. So, like I said, Walton Goggins is parked over here. Yeah, can't, can't even stand here now without thinking of Fat Man, so. <laughs> All right, let's gain entry. Son of a critch. Oh, thank yeah, you, sir. We're going in. Going in. So... Yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. You gotta adjust the eyes so here. So, in, um, in that flashback scene in Son of a Critch, uh, this was actually used in the scene. So Mark Critch, who plays his own father in the show, um, it's like a flashback to the Cold War and he's in a bunker in Iceland. Okay. Uh, and he walks right by here and the camera gets a f shot of him like right up against the, uh, against the big bomb. That's awesome. So that's in Son of a Critch. Yeah. That, that is cool. I've, I've filmed this before, uh, did another tour here at the Defen Bunker. This is more, we're, we're going to show what you will find in here. It's the tunnel over here. However, uh, we're going to talk about more of the stuff that was used in films when we can. We'll pretty much show you everything. Look at that. Those are pretty cool. Screen used in Son of a Critch. Yeah, I don't think it appeared in um, 
The sum of all fears, but definitely in some of the crit sheet. This was definitely in some of all fears. So, we came through this way, but in some of all fears, Morgan Freeman and company actually come down here. This was not here. This, this is brand new, cool looking thing. Yeah, I've never, I've never seen that. But they come right over here, and I'm going to show a clip from the movies, see what I'm talking about. They head this way into offices that were over here, and you'll actually see these very heavy doors in the film. Look at the size of those. You'll see those in some of all fears. Pretty cool. Well, this is all new here. Uh, yeah, I've never seen this, this thing. Projection is brand right. new. Well, yeah, I've never seen this. To me, it is. Uh, I was just here six months ago, and that thing wasn't there. So. Pretty cool though. This is definitely a, what they use in some of all fears as their entryway. Like we said, the actual entryway is where these folks are exiting. Yeah. But as soon as I came in here, I knew that. Never seen this projection, but pretty cool. Morgan Freeman was walking right here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and this side is just like an emergency exit. I walked around during the summer out to those doors, and uh, there's nothing really notable there. It just looks like a little shed with some doors. Our future is a challenge and a danger. There you go. It's pretty crazy. See, so these are the exact doors. These have never been changed. And they were used in the film, Some of All Fears. You just see them walk into their offices this direction from the tunnel very quickly, but... So and these cool. are the original bunker doors dating back to the 60s when this bunker was built. Yeah. Yeah. Exact same ones. All right. Let's head, head further in. I did a tour here, and the tour guide pointed out a device that was up on the wall, and he made everybody guess as to what it did what was its function in the bunker and after everybody made all these crazy guesses he said it's actually just a fake prop from the movie some of all fears that they never took away right and we've been looking for it yeah. can't seem to find it but something was up on this bottom wall and you remember they're definitely being stairwell i think it was in a stairwell film this yeah. is probably exactly where that was we're gonna guess we're gonna assume <laughs> we have no better info, so I think uh, this must be it. Must be it. What else would have been up here? Let's see where something was attached that was exactly that size. This is, pr this is probably it. Could have been it, yeah. I'm going to check out one level beneath this as well and see if any of the numbers match up with the film. But it was one of these. John Voight. That was one of the other actors. Oh, John Boyd's car. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's what I had to think of to remember his name. Right? I'm, going, I'm just driving around in John Boyd's car. That's how I know that John Boyd spells it J-O-N and not J-O-H-N. <laughs> yes, yes. Choose on his pencils. Yeah, so definitely think it was uh, one level up because I don't remember this red door. This is the fire equipment room. Probably some cool stuff in there that we're not allowed to go check out. Well, it's uh, secured, as you'll see right here. Right. There's no getting through. Yeah. Not breaking that force field. So we got another launch. This one from our yes. Central Russia. Oh, yes. Yes. Because I think the cafeteria is up this way. So this is another level lower. If it wasn't the other one we were at, this is where. Morgan Freeman, John Voight are going through in some of all fears. And you can see that it goes down and up. I don't recall seeing this door, so. Yeah. But this is how much you get to see in the defense bunker. Up, down, and all around. So we're going to take a little tour and uh, see where it brings us. covered this room when I was here last time, my other Deacon Bunker uh, 
episode. But I didn't talk about what they filmed in here for Fat Man. So, in the film Fat Man, they use this room. It's good, no one's in here. You'll see these pillars really well. When Walton Goggins is uh, doing his shooting practice, it's Christmas Day and he's uh, running the course. So he's doing a shooting target practice. I think they utilized this room for part of that. The martial arts scene, I'm pretty darn sure. Because uh, I definitely remember these pillars. But he's going from room to room when he's doing his uh, target practice. Oh, damn. That was a course record. Let's run it again. Are you not being compensated for your time? There's also another scene where he's doing karate. And I'm pretty sure that was shot in here too. And he breaks the guy's arm as he's prepping for his hunt for Santa Claus. So, so they definitely utilize this room nice. quite a bit for uh, Walton Goggins and Fat Man. Of course, he did a whole uh, very echoey in here, huh? It is, yeah. It's an echo room. We'll see how that turns out on video. <laughs> it's yeah. an echo room. <laughs> Are you not being compensated for your time? Look at the size of those doors. There we go. Filming each other. Get the size of those pillars. There's a ladder over there. You want to have a ladder match, Rob? <laughs> One of those old blue ladders like at Royal Rumble 2000. Oh, we could do a WLC. A WLC. <laughs> As I was just looking, <laughs> me and Rob were looking back and forth through this. Didn't actually see the size. Oh god, look at that. Yeah. We can move it. Oh wow, okay, it's chained up right there. Look at that. This thing's kinda like a like what you would steer a ship with. That's how they close that. That is a solid piece of metal right there. Because this is the old uh, Bank of Canada gold vault that all the gold would have been brought to in case of an attack. So the, the whole vault is like completely separate from the rest of the structure. Oh yeah. And actually, if I'm looking at it more, they probably utilize some of this for his shooting practice. Huh. I just set up all kinds of stuff around here. Kind of creepy going down here. I don't know how far this goes. What the heck? Whoa. I've never been back here. I had no idea it could go this way. I thought you were behind me. I went the other way. <laughs> wow, Let's see there's mirrors. There's mirrors. Yeah, because you have you can see the entire way around the vault just from the Wow. That is interesting. Tour in the Deepin bunker with Rob on location. Just in case is looking for you. Just in case. So if it was in the days of the Cold War and they were stuck down here. You'd still need to exercise, and you'd use this as a chin-up bar. Yeah. I can't reach. I'm pretty good at chin-ups, but I can't reach. I can reach, but I can't do chin-ups, so oh, we're see. even. Actually watching some of all fears last night and I could have sworn there's points where I think Ben Affleck is working on like office computer and you can see these bulletin boards there well you know it's hard for me to say if this is the exact these are the exact bulletin boards but 
They look pretty old. They look like they've been here a long time. They've been used. A lot of these tables and chairs look similar to the ones you see in some of all fears as well. So it could have used any of these rooms. Pretty cool though. And uh, obviously this was the <laughs> freezer and morgue. Freezer and morgue. Let's check it out. Been in here before. Oh, just a piece of chicken that big. Is that chicken or is that from the morgue? Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> Green head. All right, we could really have a good wrestling match in here. We got the trash cans, man. The wrestling trash cans. I'll let you hit me over the head with that. <laughs> so are, are these the products that oh, they would have eaten? The body bag. Right oh, here. wow, body bag. Remember? <laughs> Look. They had a guy in there and his head came off. <laughs> oh no. Again, it's like wrestling, right? Remember when Undertaker started out before he even had Paul Bear and he would put everybody in a body bag after giving them the tombstone? Oh yeah. All those uh, unknown people, I called them like his cold files. Yeah. Nobody knew who they were. He hadn't even padded the tombstones. So he was like breaking their necks legitimately. And then just putting them in the body bag, carrying them. Do they have Big B Celery? I don't know that. Gee whiz. Do you want a random Undertaker fact about Ottawa? Okay, sure. So for quite a few years, after the night after Survivor Series, they would have a house show in Ottawa at the Civic Center. Right. So that night that the Undertaker beat Hulk Hogan in the uh, title. Okay, yeah. Well, that was and, in Detroit. Right? Yeah. So the next night here in Ottawa... There was a house show, and so that was actually The Undertaker's first ever title defense here in Ottawa at a house show at the Civic Center. Really? And then a week later at that, like, pop-up pay-per-view called Tuesday This Tuesday in Texas, in Texas yeah. when he lost it again. Yeah. So just for that one week when he was actually champion, and this was his first title defense. I'm glad the title win goes down in history more than the longevity of the reign. Hey, <laughs> if you want to keep things straight, you keep Jack Tunney in charge. <laughs> Yeah, it's some more stored cans of food in here. Pork and beans. I could dine on pork and beans for a while. Dusty road style. Dine with kings and queens. Slept in the alley and dined on pork and beans. <laughs> Always watch your step. Got trip hazards all over this place. Everywhere. But at least if you were trapped down here for any conceivable amount of time, they had a little canteen. Rob's taking a look here. Look at these old articles. Wow, the old Sanyo. 97, 97. Look at this old cash register. It's a relic now. It's a relic. If you smoked, no worries. Got your brand. <laughs> Look at the old Ajax playing cards. Probably essential if you're trapped down here. And a comb. Aqua Velva. It's pretty cool. I love looking at old stuff like this. Yeah. Old Coast Soap. <laughs> wow, the old Crest logo. Never been big on Crest. I'm a Colgate guy. So, I wonder where they sourced all this from. <laughs> These old head and shoulders bottles. 30 cents off. 30 cents off. I mentioned this one, this old Q tip box. That is fine. I still use Q tips. That old logo. Sterilized cotton swabs. <laughs> they look like original Q tips to the box, too. So, I mean, what it is is Canex. And the Canadian Forces Exchange System, active retail operation made up of stores and services that would meet the unique needs of the military community. So it was founded as Maple Leaf Services in 1954, informally christened as Canex in 68. And its mandate is to ensure that all the military families have access to the consumer goods and services no matter where they are stationed or posted. So they can still brush their teeth after having a cigarette. <laughs> And then play some cards. Look at this, right behind the bar over here in the Canex. Look at these 
old Smarties. I heard, I, heard, I heard that the little Debbie's closing up. We're not going to have oatmeal cream pies anymore. Might have to jack these ones. <laughs> these old 7-Up Coca-Cola bottles. Can Canada Dry. Hershey Milk Chocolate. Yeah. The cherry. Looks like the old chocolate bars in Willy Wonka, you know, when you're looking for the gold. Yes. Tickets. Nielsen Chocolate Bar, 15 cents. Never even heard of that. We should get a little closer, but... Yeah. Very cool. How old do you think these Coca-Cola cups are? Oh, like, bowling alley 80s, at least. Think these are from the 80s? Wow. Yeah. From Beach the, like, nuts. the wax covering that's on it. I'm sure that's what it goes back to. That's pretty cool. So many different little offices, private telephone booths. As I said before, I could have sworn they used this room for some of all fears. They very well could have, because it might just not necessarily look the same. All these phones are black, but if they had to contact the White House, they probably would have had one of those red phones right here. That's pretty cool. Very interesting room. So, son of a critch would have utilized this room. Yeah, they had a scene uh, taking place in an office, and you could see all of the, the clocks time zone there. clocks there. Yeah, the time zone clocks. Very cool. And those TVs, too. Were the ashtrays in there? Uh, I don't remember. These ashtrays look like they've seen some stuff. Right? Look like they've been here a really long time. They're not new. And with these water jugs. But these TVs are probably in. Son of a critch. So yeah, you can see these in that show. All the time zone clocks. UCT, Newfoundland, Atlantic, Eastern, Central, Mountain Time, and Pacific. Still keep the Purell around here. COVID-19 still lingering. Okay, so here's a screen grab here on Rob's phone of son of a critch. See, same room, you see that television right there to the left, it's right up there. What about the map, is the map there? You can't see this wall, but oh my God, that desk is right there. It's the one behind us. That's that, well no, look at this, look. Look at the picture. Oh, sorry, that one. Yes. Yeah, this yeah. disc here, you can see that black line there. Yeah. So, right there. All the yeah. time zone clocks up there. These doors were closed in that shot, but... Yeah. That is pretty cool. Just yeah. about everything. Even uh, that, that thing right there. It's right there on the wall. And you notice they replaced the uh, flag with the American flag. Of course. Right there. Naturally. Naturally. You switch out the flags. Even though it's a Canadian show, but they try and be as realistic as possible. Yeah, one more shot of that here. This is exactly where the picture would have been taken from. And that's that television right there. All the clocks and the doors over there. When was that filmed? Uh, just recently, because it's a new episode aired about two weeks ago on CBC. Uh, yeah, so nothing in here pretty... has changed except that flag. Now, they might have filmed it last summer. That's true. But... Uh... Still nothing. Fairly recent, yeah, yeah. Everything, everything matches up there. It's a great show. Everybody should check it out. It's on CBC, and in the UK, it's on Paramount Plus as well. You're on TV, TV. Come on down to Greenfield. Morning, noon, or night. Our shelves are filled with goodness. Our stores are clean and bright. Love that ad. Nice. What's wrong with my television? Check this out. Emergency drinking water. <laughs> Survival life pack. These old board games. Auto Atomic submarine torpedo toy. 
Red Storm Rising. This is cool. This is a cool little television area. Just chill and watch my wrestling in here. All I can say is for your sake, something bad better happen. These switches and knobs. No idea what any of them do, but somebody did it. <laughs> Very pleasing to the eye. CHU Canada, coordinated universal time, 18 hours, 58 minutes. Another shelter area. Someone would have to hunker down in. At least they'd have plenty of colorful cups and utensils, survival life packs. It's a very shoddy looking toilet. I believe it's just a toilet over a garbage can. calendar in here. Scott on tape and sons. The nuclear family kitchen. Welcome to the Greens family kitchen. When they moved to Ottawa from Red Deer, when William Green was posted to Canadian Forces Station Carp in 1961, worked as a teletype operator, Royal Canadian Corps of Signals. This is supposed to be what his house looked like, his kitchen. Looks like it. Yeah. Can I get into the kitchen? No. Okay. Just uh, show you some of the appliances from over the counter here. Look at that old baby chair. <laughs> if you can see at the window here, you'll see a mushroom cloud explosion. Ah, they got a good view. They got a good view <laughs> of that. Maybe okay. not something you want to have a great view of. Look at that old Leonard refrigerator. That is, oh my god, look at that old Hoover. Doesn't have the hose on it, but right there in the open cupboard, you see a, a really old Hoover. And look at those cans above it for sugar, flour, coffee, and tea. I'm sure we had some just like that growing up. It's like when I was really young. It's crazy. Yeah. Decontamination. This is one of my favorite areas here. Get in there and decontaminate, Rob. Right there. No peeking. <laughs> no peeking. Yeah, have to decontaminate in here. This goes on. Yeah, there was several stages. Eh? You'd do like mm -hmm. several showers before you yeah. get out, and then they'd use the Geiger counter to see if you were acceptable. Yeah, they would make sure you were damn well decontaminated. giving you a personal tour today. Can take group tours. Not us. Taking the Rob on location tour. Emergency escape hatch. Is that what this is? Exit through the hatch. Take an emergency escape. We're going through here. You lead, sir. Persecution mania. Okay, so, so the women in the bunker resided in here. Their lockers, their bunks. Yeah, 
Yeah, they definitely had to have a place to operate on wounded or help you out if you're sick, obviously. The bathroom. The whole medical office. Just don't touch nothing. Look at this. The operating room. <laughs> they can sell tickets. They should have been selling tickets to operations. I got four for the Winslow tumor. Four for the Winslow tumor. Ah, see, the proper term would be the operating theater. I'm going to the theater tonight. The operating theater. The surgical opera house. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much impossible for someone like me or Rob to look at an operation viewing station and not think of Seinfeld. We don't have any junior mints on us, so... It's all right. They're delicious. <laughs> they're delicious. <laughs> Very refreshing. They're, they're not performing any surgeries today anyway, so... Over here you got the dentist's office. Gotta have a dentist. As you see, dental chairs haven't changed all that much. If you weren't sure these Cold War words mean, Cold War is actually a state of hostility without open warfare between countries. It's a war where a state of political tension between the Soviet Union and the U.S. and its allies between 1945 and 1991. What's a hot war? Hot war, a conflict, or war that involves actual fighting. Ah, makes sense. Hot. That's hot. But the Iron Curtain. A non-official boundary between Soviet Union Eastern Bloc countries and the rest of Europe during the Cold War. Iron. You can go on for days down in this bunker, reading all kinds of historical facts. There's all kinds of little exhibits in here. <laughs> Some interesting noises coming from in here. Check this out, though. There's a picture of uh, President Kennedy and Prime Minister Diefenbaker here in Ottawa at Rideau Hall. Okay. Minister Diefenbaker, right there. on Berlin in here. Look at this old Soviet officer's cap. This is a DDR M56 helmet. Yeah, Checkpoint Charlie. Hey, go Charlie up in the trees. Look at the barbed wire that lines the top of the walls up here. It's pretty neat. It's a good touch. It's a good touch. You could just walk around here, probably for days if you were going to attempt to read every little fact they have accessible to you. Oh, there's the end of the barbed wire right there. End of the barbed wire. Superpower. Powerful and influential nation. Influential nation. The term was used specifically during the Cold War to describe the Soviet Union and the U.S. in a proxy war. You didn't know what a proxy war was. It's fought between or within less powerful countries whose, whose combatants are being supported by opposing superpowers. And the Mad War. Mad, Mad War. Mutual Assured Destruction. Speak mutually assured destruction. Reminds me of Megadeth. Literally, just from room to room, it's just... Relics and relics. Look at this old tape dispenser. Look at this old little thing of liquid paper. Used to love the way that stuff smelled. Can't go past this point. But that's pretty cool. That's the bottle I remember that stuff coming. Yeah, you remember that liquid paper? <laughs> I think, maybe this is like a weird fact that I'm getting totally wrong, but one of the monkeys, his mother invented whiteout. Really? I one think, of the monkeys? Maybe I'm way off, but I feel like I heard that somewhere. Oh, wow. Check out the size of this map. 
predicted fallout danger areas. What's that? Just all of Canada and the upper United States? It's just up here where it's cold is where the predicted fallout dangers are. And then here you can see a map of Ottawa, <gasps> downtown and Parliament Hill there, and then the fallout sections. Right, so really if this was downtown Ottawa, this depicts here, we're outside of Ottawa here in Carp. Yeah. We're safe. And I believe the plan was to have a direct train from downtown that would come out to this location in case of emergency. Right to the but I don't bunker. know if it ever got built. So where we are on the map, Canada is big. We're down here in the capital of Canada. Reminds me of being in high school. The old speaker announcements. The morning announcements. This old radio here. Looks like it's still in good shape. It's pretty cool. It's too bad we can't get into this little studio. You can tell the era it's from with the, the record players and the, the tapes and stuff. That was the radio broadcasting studio. So, this would have been the Prime Minister's suite. Close quarters. The Prime Minister would have had his suite in here. This would have been his office. Well, actually, his cigarette this is his ashtray. secretary's office. Okay, his secretary. Would have been one of the only women permitted in the bunker in an emergency. No dial tone. Yeah. Looking at that, look at this. Stuff on the clipboards and this old Olympia typewriter. It's very cool. But don't touch. Look <laughs> these old office lamps. Look at that. The old dial phone. I never figured these out when I was a kid, but we did have them in the house in the 90s. They never figured it out, so his suite was in here. Oh, okay, this was his office. This so was his office. Secretary out there, Prime Minister in here, the white phone, nice desk. Still a very quality desk for today. Yeah, better than his uh, not so luxurious bed in here. <laughs> Don't sit on the bed. How would his wife get in there with him? She wasn't on the list. She wasn't on the list. No, nope. spouses weren't uh, on the list for the bunker. Jeez. There's Mr. Thrasher. There's Rob on location. And here's where he would do his business. Ah, decent shower. Toilet doesn't look too comforting, but shower looks great. So does the blue sink. Yeah. Not too shabby. Some more. Rooms in here, a lot of maps. Minister of External Affairs operate out of here. I'm not sure why they don't let us go in here. Oh, check it out. These old pencil sharpeners. Used lots of those in elementary school. Not so much now. No. I haven't seen one in so long. That's a calculator? Attached to the desk? Oh, it's not attached. It doesn't work anymore. Huh. This place goes everywhere. It's wild to see all this relic keyboards and monitors. The old Hewitt Rand. These old ashtrays too. A lot of ashtrays around here. People love to smoke. Yeah. They were very stressed out in those days, <laughs> being stuck down here. Not a lot of air circulation. Yeah, it must have smelt like cigarettes. And nothing else. And nothing else. Right. Yeah, they might have used this for deleted scenes, right? Call 911. I can't, can't figure it out. to check out as you're exiting okay. the deep in bunker. Hats, okay. DVDs, you got these little groundhogs. 
A groundhog bunker buddy. Look at these. Dad's root beer candies. Also fireball ones. I don't know if they have alcohol in them, but pretty cool. You get a mug and deep and bunker hot sauce. Covert heat. Covert heat. Take shelter. Pins. The guy who talked to the bear and the girl is 100%, sir. Submarine launched 12 to 15 megatons and they went to strike status 15 minutes prior. Sink land with force of Roosevelt splash 6. And I think it was about 50 50 what the guy said. That's about going to do it. From the one and only Defen Bunker in Carp and the one and only Rob on Location. Check him out, robonlocations.com. Rob on location. Though. Rob on location. <laughs> Did I say locations? Yeah. No ne ads. Nearly had it. Nearly Although had it. I do have location. plenty of locations. Plenty, plenty. Go plenty check out his that. photographs. Okay. Check out his pics on Instagram. There's pics from movies all over LA, New York. TV shows. I've done TV shows. tapings. I've got info about museums, like pop culture locations. Um, Glass tunnels. Yeah. Look at this thing. Look what we're standing in. So thanks for coming along, everybody. Please like, please subscribe. Check out Rob on location. It's got amazing pictures, as I was saying. And visit us in Ottawa. Come check out the Defen Bunker. Yeah. If you want to come to the Defen Bunker, come to Ottawa. Maybe you'll see Mr. Thrasher. Maybe you'll see Rob on location. <laughs> please like, please subscribe. If you're new, subscribe is going to let you know when a new episode goes up. Never know what you may be missing here. Or who I'll be with. That's right. What we'll be seeing on the Mr. Thrasher. So, Thanks again, everybody. It's really cool to be here. It's the Echo Tunnel. Very echoey. All right. We'll take you to the end of the tunnel, and then we'll let you go. Thanks if you stayed to the end of the video. Much more to come. Film and locations, museum tours, historical spots, maybe some churches, cemeteries. Exiting the blast tunnel. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool place to come and check out. It's about 20 bucks, so. And this huge screen used. Screen used. In which show? Son of a Critch. CBC. Son of a Critch on CBC. All right, we'll see you guys next time from the Deep and Bunker.